Good to see you. Glad you could make it. Um, it's the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany, and it's God's blessings on your worship. We want you to be having a wonderful service today. I hope you sing nice and loud. And we begin with our opening hymn, 842.
studied by all who delight in him. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He, is. he has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hand are faithful and just. All his precepts are tr trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he will speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. For as our Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation
turn up. There we go. Nicole picked that hymn, and uh, it's a good one. She actually replaced the one I picked a while back when I used to pick hymns, because that first verse is exactly the summary of what the sermon's about, where the demon talks, Away from us, the demon cried, when Christ the Lord drew near, our dark, disordered world is lost when you, the light, appear. That's exactly right. That's what the demon was saying. And in Facebook, if you're friends of mine, I put this out as a little teaser for our message today, and I asked this question. What does independence from God and hell have in common? A profession of faith about God that demons eagerly demonstrate and encourage. We're going to unpack that. But first, we want to talk about the subject of the gospel lesson, and it has to do with this thing called authority. Let me put it in this context, and it almost looks like you guys already made your choice, but before I uh, knew that there was going to be a snowstorm, I thought of this analogy. What if I were preaching this morning at Emmanuel Lutheran Church, which I am, but you also knew that Jesus was preaching at another church down the road? Where would you go? Would you come here and me preach, or would you come here Jesus preached down the road. How many would come here to hear me preach? I didn't think so. Why is that? Well, you first say to yourself, well, he's the son of God, he's the savior and all that, but there's something very important in the distinction that must be made. He would preach with authority. There is a distinction you need to make in Scripture. The reason why you stood for the gospel reason, and why that's a tradition of the church, is because when Jesus speaks, he speaks with an authority unlike that of the prophets. So if you go and, and read Isaiah, Isaiah is speaking the word of the Lord, and he speaks this way. Thus says somebody else. I'm a prophet, thus says the Lord, somebody else. This is what the Lord says, and he says it, and it is the word of God. When Jesus comes, he doesn't do that. He is the authority of the word speaking through his mouth, because he is God. He is the word. And the people, when they began to listen to Jesus preach, and speak, and teach, in the synagogue, they noticed that. That's why it says, you know, it's kind of like this. Who is this guy? This is that Jesus we're talking about. Yeah, there's a lot of word spreading about him healing people. And yeah, did you hear him speak? Yeah, he speaks with such what? Authority. What does this mean? And that's the kind of thing that's going on. They're trying to wonder what to make of it. But there's a demon that comes around. And he knows what to make of it. And that distinction is being made here. The people were struck by the blow of Jesus. And if you look at the original language, it's like that. It's like when they were sitting there watching Jesus, it's like they were blown away. They were struck by the side of their head because of what Jesus was saying. That was the idea. Now, it's very interesting, that kind of reaction I can sometimes get with you. From my perspective up here, what I'm watching, especially even when it's full, uh, I can tell whether I've got your attention, right, Pastor Dexter? I can tell when I've got your attention. I can tell when you're not paying attention. I can tell when you're distracted, right, Pastor Hoover? It happens that way. And I can tell when I really got you zeroed in. Well, when Jesus spoke, everybody was what? Zeroed in. That's the thing, right? But it's like this, again. What's going on with this guy? He speaks with such authority. Along comes the demon-possessed individual, and the demon speaking through an individual. What does he say? He says this, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. He's the only one who has a clear picture as to why Jesus speaks with supremacy and authority. Everyone else, why? He speaks with authority. But the demon speaks to him 
him as the Holy One of God. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And so he announces to all, this is the Holy One of God. What have you to do with us? What he's saying there is, we don't want you here. It's the same as that verse. Because when you come here with your light, it destroys everything that we're trying to do. I announce to all, I announce to all, me, the manifestation of evil, I know and proclaim to all the ignorant in this assembly, you are Jesus, the Holy One. He's not trying to convince them of anything else. Isn't that interesting? Wouldn't you think that evil and depravity would hide that fact? But he doesn't. He's the only one with a clear picture in the audience. He acknowledges the authority. It is what all living beings will end up doing, as it says in the scriptures, that the name of Jesus, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow on heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Everyone will say that, and there will be those who will say it in praise, and there will be those who will say it just like this demon with a fist raised against God, saying, I know who you are, and I don't want anything to do with you. He will proclaim it that way. He has the answer to your wonderment of what do you do with the authority of Jesus. And his answer is, away with him. What do you do with Jesus? Leave us alone. We don't want anything to do with you. We don't want anything to do with your intervention of authority upon us. See, you are not fooling me, Jesus. I know who you are, and for that reason, leave us alone because of who you are. Leave us alone. Leave us to our own way of life. Leave us to our own pursuits in depravity. Because without you, I can proceed in what I want to do. I can proceed in my freedom. Let us continue outside of your authority, Jesus, so that I can make up my own morals, choose my, for myself how to live without your nasty, objective truth. Allow me to proceed in life that it may be meaningless, and therefore in my meaningless Wrestle with that and ask yourself in life, how often do your actions resemble that of the demon? We all must acknowledge Jesus, says so in the scripture. How do you acknowledge Jesus? Knowing who he is, it does nothing to change the demon's attitude towards the Savior. Faithlessness, dear friends, always has a proclamation. It does. Not just faithfulness, but faithlessness has a proclamation. In other words, because he is God, that is the only reason to reject, reject him. His authority is what makes me miserable. Right? Right? Now, think about the commandments of God. Think about how God wants you to live, and you live in sin. When you're tempted, you're saying that. His authority makes me miserable. And that's why I act on my sin. The creator of life has with him no meaning in life. It is my job to produce meaning to life, but first I must get rid of the authority of God. It's exactly what our culture suggests. It's what they think makes them free. Freedom of choice when a, a baby resides in the womb. And they turn it into a health care issue when it's not. Freedom to choose my sexuality. Freedom to choose my own gender. That's all from the pits of hell. All of it. Freedom to, to say your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth. But then again, what is truth? So now we just dissect the truth as being nothing exactly. That's the point. Now I can be free. What do you have to do with us, Jesus? We don't believe in truth. If there's meaningless, I can be free. The entire concern of God is what resides in the authority of God. Jesus does come with his authority, but instead evil is all about labeling my dominion of God as being intrusive, and my desire.
desire is I know who you are. Notice that the demon doesn't communicate any hope with what he says. Do you notice that? There's no hope. God is not gracious. How about those people who say, I don't believe in the Christian God because your Christian God sends people to hell and a loving God wouldn't send people to hell. You've heard that? How do you battle that? Here's how you battle it. Understand when somebody says that every time, guaranteed, guaranteed, every time somebody says that, they're lessening the severity of their sin and they're lessening the grace of God in order for it to fit their mode. Make sense? They're lessening the severity of their own sin and they're lessening the righteousness and grace of God bestowed upon people by the authority of God. Every time. He firmly holds to hostility to the reality of God. He knows who Jesus is and yet trembles with his fist in the air. And that's now the eternal proclamation of hell. That's freedom from God. What is hell? Freedom from God. The very thing people are asking. It's actually the opposite. If there is a righteous, gracious God, there must be a hell to deal with those who reject him. God, I know who you are. I will forever believe being a, a part from you is better than being with you. See, there's no such thing as an atheist, only demons and wretched humanity saying, I know who you are and I don't want it. Everyone believes in God, everyone. The denial of God only turns into a belief in God with a fist in the air, see? And that's the basis of all temptation. And when it gets close to you, that's when you want to look at it and say, wow. So Jesus speaks with authority, he speaks to you with authority, but how does he come with his authority? What does it really mean? How do you and I define his authority as opposed to the demon? You say what? I know who you are. And think now what Jesus did in his authority when he came the first time. And it's completely opposite of what the demon is afraid of. How does he come? How amazing is authority. When it becomes wrapped in humanity, in human flesh and in humility, serving you, by his authority, what does he do? He serves you in his life that leads to death on the cross. Behold the authority of God, and here is what it looks like. How do you do it? Look, he, te he teaches with such authority. He's not like anybody else. Yes, where does he take it? Right here. And the simple question says, leave me alone. I don't want it. And what does God say? In my authority, I'm giving it to you. Leave me alone. And Jesus says to you, no, I won't. In my authority, I will not leave you alone because I love you. Instead, in my authority, I will allow the nails to be driven by the rejection of the demon. I'll let them have their way with me in their desire to rid of me. And in their trying to rid of me, I become the atonement for the sins of the world. And in my authority, listen to your friends, in my authority, I can forgive you. And since my forgiveness is one, it's an absolution of authority, nobody can take that forgiveness away. But I know who you are. You're the Son of God. Receive these nails into your hands as a token of our human disdain for you. Leave us alone as we attempt to rid you of your authority. Die up there as we mock you, the demon cries. It is better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven. The demon demands. And Jesus says no. And by that same authority, he casts that filth out of the human being and restores the human. By that same authority, he dies on the cross and restores all of us. Because he's in charge. Because he's in 
church. That's how close God gets to you. And it's only because of his authority you can be assured that he is that close. The love of God that reveals my need for total childlike dependence on him now submits to the authority of God. So what do you do with him? What are you going to do with his authority? Worship him. Thank him. Praise him. Rest in him. Forever. Because of his devotion for you. Because of his authority, no one can take away what he has given you. Because he's in charge. Be at peace in his kingdom. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn of praise.
faithful preachers into your harvest who will be diligent to listen to your word and speak in faithfulness. Preserve us from false prophets who would lead us away from your truth and give us ears to hear gladly the saving word of Christ. Heavenly Father, guard our families and homes and build them up with love. Support parents in their tasks of instructing their children. Strengthen those whose faith is weak and make us bold to forego convenience and security to attest the truth with most holy faith with hearts and actions. Almighty God, give health and success to our president, our governor, our legislatures, judges, and all who serve for our governance and protection. Make them high in purpose, wise in counsel, and unwavering in duty. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son cast out unclean spirits and taught with authority. He is the great physician of body and soul. Have mercy on those who are sick, distressed, in danger, facing need. We especially pray for Verdeen Truman, Ed O'Regan, Don Goldmeyer, Stephanie Schley, Butch Kenny, who was the brother of Sherry Luma, sustain them with patience, trust in your mercy and care. Dear Lord, give comfort to the family and friends of Mary Sims, daughter-in-law of Pastor and Nona Sims, and also Marcia Seats. May your peace, which passes all understanding, be the encouragement that leads them to the trust of your Son's resurrection and ours as well, as we look forward to the union we have in heaven. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Neither runs any kind of danger 